I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I'm going to show you how to make a satisfying, vegan-friendly katsu. And I'm even going to show you how I make my own tonkatsu sauce, so stick around! Katsu is just a Japanese abbreviation for cutlet, and for this version, I've turned a boring block of tofu into a plant-based protein that's meaty and loaded with umami. With a shatteringly crisp panko shell and a savory sweet sauce, this tofu katsu is a delicious alternative for vegans and vegetarians that even meat lovers can get behind. Looks good, right? Let's take a look at our ingredients. For the katsu, I'm using one pack of firm tofu, one tablespoon of marmite, a quarter cup of vegetable stock, 40 grams or about a third of a cup of all-purpose flour, a third cup cold water, and one cup panko. For my vegan tonkatsu sauce, I've got a quarter cup sake, a quarter cup apple juice, a quarter cup vegan Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of date syrup, one large clove of garlic, and half a small onion. At least a day before you want to make this, cut a slit down one side of the pack of tofu and squeeze out as much water as you can without smashing the tofu. We're going to freeze this overnight, which is going to cause any remaining water in the tofu to separate out from the soy protein as it freezes. This will give the tofu a firm, meaty texture once it's been defrosted and had all the water pressed out. Now I'm going to pop this into the freezer and let it freeze overnight. I've time traveled to the next day and the tofu is as hard as a rock, so I'm going to open up the package and set the block of tofu on a wire rack. It's going to be too slick to weigh down, so let it defrost a bit. Once the top of the tofu is no longer an ice skating rink, I'm going to place a tray on top of the tofu and weigh it down with cans or jars. Now we just need to wait for the tofu to fully defrost. While we wait for that, let's get started on our vegan tonkatsu sauce. The first thing I'm going to do is grate the garlic. I like using a daikon grater to do this, but the rasp on a box grater or a microplane will work fine. Then I'm going to grate the peeled and trimmed onion in as well. If you're feeling lazy, you can also use a food processor or a blender to puree these. Now I'm going to add the sake and apple juice to a pot and let it boil until it's thick and syrupy. This will take anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes and the idea is to burn off all of the alcohol and most of the excess water. Okay, this is getting nice and thick, so let's add the Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, ketchup, and date syrup. And then I'm going to give this a stir. Next, I'm going to add the grated garlic and onion and stir those in as well. We want to let these cook together until the onions and garlic dissolve into the sauce, making it nice and thick. This should take about another five minutes. If you see foam rising to the surface like this, just use a skimmer or spoon to skim off these impurities. Look how nice and carbally this has gotten. This viscous texture is going to help the sauce cling to our katsu without making it soggy. When it's done, transfer your vegan tonkatsu sauce into a jar and let it cool. Okay, let's check and see how our tofu is doing. You can see it's released a ton of water into the tray below, and look how flat it's gotten. Now I'm going to split this into two cutlets by cutting it in half horizontally. You'll want to use a sharp knife to do this, and if you're not confident in your ability to cut it straight, you can mark off some reference points using toothpicks. The next thing I'm going to do is add the marmite to the vegetable stock and mix it together. I know Marmite kind of looks like chocolate fudge, but it's a pungent, savory seasoning made from spent brewer's yeast, and if you can't find Marmite, Vegemite will work as well. 
Together with the vegetable stock, it's gonna give our tofu katsu loads of umami and a marvelously meaty flavor. Once the marmite is fully dissolved, use a pastry brush to paint the liquid onto every surface of the tofu. You're not gonna use all of the liquid, but this is the main seasoning for the katsu, so don't be shy and make sure you get a good coating on every surface. Next, I'm going to make a batter by adding the flour and water to a dish and stirring them together until there are no lumps of flour left. This is going to serve as a glue to get our panko to adhere to the tofu. To bread our vegan katsu, I've got our batter and panko lined up and I'm going to dip a tofu cutlet into the batter to coat all the sides. Then I'm going to let any excess batter drip off and move it over to the panko. Scoop some of the breadcrumbs on top of the tofu, and then you wanna shake it around to coat the sides of the katsu as well. Once you have an even coating, just repeat the same steps with the other tofu cutlet. Now I'm just gonna line a wire rack with a few sheets of paper towels and we're ready to start frying. Before we fry this up, I want to take a moment to thank everyone for supporting my work here. Whether you're signed up for my secret stash of recipes, or you're about to share this video with some friends, these are just a few of the many ways that you can support my work. If you've learned something new from this video and you want to help, hit the link in the description down below to see what you can do. I've got a high-sided pot of oil preheated to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 Celsius, and I'm gonna gently lower the tofu cutlets into the oil. Now I'm gonna let these fry undisturbed for about two minutes to let the coating set. Then I'm gonna flip them over and fry them for another two minutes. Keep flipping the katsu every couple of minutes until they're crisp and evenly browned on both sides. These are looking perfect, so I'm going to transfer them onto our prepared rack to let them drain. To serve the vegan katsu, I like to slice them up so they're easier to eat. Oh, it's super crispy. Okay, let's serve our tofu katsu on a bed of shredded cabbage and get this over to the table. Then I'm gonna slather on a good helping of our vegan tonkatsu sauce and we're ready to eat. Mmm, this smells so good. Itadakimasu. All right, I'm gonna go in for a centerpiece here with lots of sauce on there. Oh, look at that. As you can hear, it's shatteringly crisp on the outside. And on the inside, it's got a meaty texture that's nothing like tofu. That's because we've frozen it, which has taken out all of the excess water, and we've added back flavor with that marmite and vegetable stock. You know, when I was frying this, it actually smelled like pork, and I think it's that yeast extract in the marmite that's giving it that savory, porky aroma. All right, I'm gonna go for another bite here. <laughs> Our tofu katsu has loads of umami, but that sauce really makes it. It's savory, sweet, with just a hint of spiciness, and it goes perfectly with this. This is pretty amazing as is, but imagine it in a katsukare or a katsudon. Mmm. <laughs> it's so good. I'm going to be showing you how to turn this tofu katsu into an easy katsukare soon. But in the meantime, check out some of my other plant-based recipes and I'll catch you in the next one.